One of the big problems I encounter when I'm teaching calculus is this idea of volumes of rotation or rotational volumes or solids of rotation or whatever the different books like to call them. Um, and the issue is that it requires the ability to visualize what's happening as the, as the shape is spun around. So you run into problems like this. The area is bounded by f of x, which is our curve right here. It's bounded by x equals 1 and x equals 5, which you can see on here. It's bounded by the x-axis. So if we take a look at if we take a look at all these boundaries, I wasn't drawn very well. Take a look at all of these boundaries. We can get a look at the the area we're trying to calculate, right? This this space in here. And so the idea is that that spins around. It would make somewhat of a, like a football shape or a watermelon type shape, and we'd be trying to find the volume of this thing. What I want to do is try to make a video that, that's going to help you visualize. We're not going to do any calculating of any volumes or anything like that. I just want to try to get it to be as clear as possible what this looks like when it's happening. So the first thing we're going to do is this. We're going to take this shape. Uh, this is actually the graph of y equals x minus 3 squared plus 4. And we are going to spin it around the x-axis, but instead of doing it here in the classroom, I'm going to take you to my secret lab, aka my home, and we're going to spin it around in my yard. You can take a look at it there. This one is the x-axis. Uh, and then you can see the function. It's actually a piece of this function here. So this is our f of x that's being spun around. And then what the drill is going to do is it's going to give us an actual representation uh, or an actual look at, at this graph spinning. So as we draw it in class, I've got these cross sections that are formed as this thing spins around. But the, uh, the drill spinning will actually allow us to see the the real shape that's formed instead of just these sort of representations that we look at in class, you know, we'll, we'll get to see what it, what it actually does. So with this one, you can get a look at the actual cross-section that was formed. So when the watermelon is sliced, and then we turn it sideways, we get to get a look at the cross-section, which is, of course, a circle. So here's my cross-section. And this is what they're always referring to as, um, as A and X in the, in the equations that we use to calculate this stuff. And of course, for this one, because it's a circle, area is going to be pi r squared, right? And then the idea here is that this distance is r, um, but because this graph comes from our function f of x, this, this height is also it's a y value, right? So, so we're going to say that r is equal to f of x, which means that our equation down here is going to switch to be that the area is pi times f of x squared for each one of these watermelons. And then as the video unfolds, you can see that if you stack up all of the different slices of watermelon, it makes up the whole watermelon. And that's where the integration comes in. I want to do this one more time, but with a slight change. Uh, we, we've got the same function, the same f of x as in the previous problem, but I put a different boundary in here. 
And you can see what it's saying now is we're looking at the area that's below f of x but above the line y equals 1. So we're describing an area inside of here. So the difference between this problem and the last is that there's actually, there's a distance between our area and, and the axis of rotation, right? It's spinning around the x-axis, but there's a gap that's left between you know, our actual area and the, the line that it's spinning around. So I want to take a look at the effect that's going to have on the resulting solid. Um, again, in my secret laboratory slash backyard. x-axis and that's going to be coming all the way through here and sticking out this way and then somewhere in here we've got y-axis our original function it's going to be a little bit tough to see but it would have been kind of uh, coming through here and then over the top but also cut off right along that line so this was the this was the shape that, that was being spun around. So you can see the path that this would take came right around there and then this top part. And if we start you know sort of piecing this together, just for comparison purposes, we can get a look at the way that we draw in the class with this watermelon right behind, just to sort of see how the shapes match up. And then you can see that in, in this case, that this thing's got a hole going right down through the middle, which is caused by the distance between our area that we're using up here and the actual graph. See that? Because it's not actually touching it. It was spinning around yeah, a distance away. That's what left that vacancy in the middle. <laughs> this time, I've got an outer circle and also an inner circle. And of course, there's the center of the whole thing. So when we look at that center point, it's important to realize you're looking right down the x-axis. So I've got two different heights in here. I'm going to stick with my same color. I've got this inner radius, r sub i. And the idea in terms of our demonstration is that the inner radius is represented by the toothpick or the toothpicks that I attached to the watermelon as it, as it spun around on the drill. And then in addition to that, we've got this distance here all the way up to the top of the watermelon slice. So this is our outer radius. And the idea is that the outer radius is f of x. And of course, we saw as the drill spun around that f of x is what turned into the watermelon. So this is also, because it's only from the middle to the top, this is half of the watermelon. 